Well, back to our top story now. We're going to look in more depth at Apple Daily and where it found itself today. Apple Daily is one of the most popular newspapers in Hong Kong, with a circulation of around 80,000 a day. And now it's closing. This is the story of how it found itself at the center of Beijing's efforts to restrict press freedom in Hong Kong. We'll start in July 2019. This was one of a series of protests against a new extradition bill in Hong Kong, a bill that would have made it easier to extradite people to mainland China. The protests were covered by Apple Daily. The founder of the paper is the businessman Jimmy Lai, and in July 2019, he met the then US Vice President Mike Pence in Washington to discuss the extradition bill. That was highly criticized. The state-owned Chinese newspaper Global Times called him a traitor for brazen collusion with the West to fuel Hong Kong protests, it said. Well, that extradition bill was withdrawn, but the animosity remained. In June 2020, Beijing made another move, this time imposing a national security law on Hong Kong. The law is far-reaching, and among the things it targets is secession, that's breaking away from the country, subversion, that's undermining the power of the central government, and collusion with foreign or external forces. Beijing argues the whole law will bring stability, but it also makes protesting harder, it makes reporting harder. And shortly after the law was imposed, Jimmy Lai said it meant Hong Kong is dead. Two months later, we saw the law in action. On August the 10th last year, police raided Apple Daily's headquarters. This footage shows Jimmy Lai being arrested on allegations of colluding with a foreign force. Apple Daily put the raid on its front page. And this was the Chinese government's justification for the raid. Hong Kong is a society ruled by law. Everyone is equal before the law. No one has extra legal privileges and no institution is beyond the reach of the law. No rights and freedoms, including the freedom of the press, can go beyond the bottom line of national security. National security above all else. It's a familiar message to those in mainland China. It's familiar in Hong Kong now, too. But following the raids, there was support for Apple Daily and it grew. Showing yourself reading the paper became a form of silent protest, and Apple Daily continued to publish anti-government headlines and anti-government artwork. Jimmy Lai had been released on bail after the August arrest, but in December, he was arrested again. This footage shows him being taken away. This time, he was facing fraud allegations, and this time, bail was denied. Hours before his arrest, he'd spoken to the BBC can induce fear in you. That's the easiest way to control you. That's the cheapest way to control you and the most effective way. And they know it and they're very, you know, they're very good at it. We now move into 2021 and the pressure on Jimmy Lai and the pro-democracy movement continued to grow. These pictures from April show activists outside a court in Hong Kong. They and Jimmy Lai were sentenced for their roles in the 2019 protests. To the pro-democracy activist Nathan Law, this moment was pivotal. And many of us think that this is definitely a political motivated charge and that really harms Hong Kong as, uh, well, showing that the judicial system is compromised. They're being seen and used as illegal weapons to prosecute democratic activists. From April, we move to the last few days. These pictures are from the 17th of June and another raid on the Apple Daily offices. For the first time, its journalists were targeted. This is the editor-in-chief, Ryan Law. He, along with senior members of his team, were arrested. The police say the raids are connected to articles that criticize Hong Kong and Chinese actions and which, they allege, are part of a conspiracy to collude with foreign forces. Here's the Hong Kong Secretary of Security. We are talking about a conspiracy in which the suspects try to make use of journalistic work to collude with a foreign country or external elements to impose sanctions or take hostile activities against Hong Kong. And the day after that raid, this was the front page of Apple Daily. Staff had used their phones to put the paper together after their computers had been seized by police. And as well as their computers being taken, the assets of the newspaper were frozen. Here's a board member of Apple Daily's parent company 
on the impact that's had. We, we can't pay payroll at this point because our assets have been frozen. Our editor in chief is in jail. Our chief executive officer is in jail. We don't, they haven't been charged with anything formally. We don't know when or if there's going to be any kind of a trial. And uh, more people are being picked up. So, of course, there's a, a real air of concern. And there's also the financial aspect. If we have the cash, but the Secretary for Security, without any court order, without any real basis, has just decreed that we're an outlaw organization. We can't pay the electricity company, we can't pay the water company, can't pay the phone bills. No choice. And now Apple Daily is shutting, all of which to the UK, to the US and many other countries looks an awful lot like an attack on freedom of speech. Not so, says Hong Kong's leader, Carrie Lam. What we are dealing with is neither a news outlet problem nor a news reporting problem. It's a suspicious act of endangering national security. So our action is not attacking press freedom just because the suspect organization is a news outlet and the suspects are people in charge of a news outlet. Well, we know Jimmy Lai will not see the fate of Apple News this way. At the end of last year, while still free to talk to the media, he described Apple Daily's battle as something far bigger than a single newspaper. And the world, the free world will be on our side. The free world will be supporting us because they know that we are sharing the same value as theirs. They know that we are fighting in the frontier for their value. If we lose, that means the defeat of the value system. Well, let's speak to the BBC's Kerry Allen, our China media analyst. Kerry, I'm curious how this story is played in the Chinese media. Well, in state media, there's just been this emphasis on um, the authorities acting within the law. Um, there's been a lot of discussion from um, state media outlets uh, within Hong Kong as well, saying that you know this is a good thing for Hong Kong. Uh, but within Hong Kong itself, there's a lot of shock that this newspaper has has finally gone. It's been around for 26 years. It has been the sole voice, like the big voice um, for pro-democracy within Hong Kong. And the idea that it's now gone, um, that, I mean, even its Twitter page has been removed, its website's gone, like literally at the stroke of midnight, it's almost vanished. It is a, is a big shock to a lot of people. And there are scenes today in Hong Kong outside the offices and outside newsstands of people now trying to get their hands on the final copy, which is out now tonight, uh, which is, I mean, it's the 23rd here, but it's the 24th in Hong Kong now. So, yeah, people now at the stroke of midnight going out trying to get that final copy. Kerry, not to diminish the significance of Apple Daily closing, but tell us more about Hong Kong media. Are there alternatives for people who are sympathetic to the pro-democracy movement? There are, yes. Uh, people can go online to outlets like Hong Kong Free Press. Um, but, uh, it, I mean, since I've been doing this job, it's very much been the case that there used to be quite a broad range of state media, independent media, pro-democracy media. And it's become very, very difficult for, for pro-democracy media to survive because advertisers are put under increased pressure uh, that if they advertise with pro-democracy papers, they might... You know, their market might suffer in the mainland. So, yeah, Apple Daily has been the only kind of key source, that, that key outlet that people go to for print media. And also there's the difficulty that a lot of online media, they, they struggle to get um, authorization to certain events and such because print media take precedence. So, yeah, it is extremely difficult for um, yeah, pro-democracy media to really survive in Hong Kong now. And there is a lot of rights groups have, have said that Hong Kong's press freedom has diminished in recent years. Kerry, we always appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much indeed. It's Kerry Allen.